What's up guys? WoW Classic Season of Discovery Phase 4 has been announced. Uh, I'm here getting ready for TwitchCon. I'm packing up my stuff. I'm, I'm rushing to get my IRL backpack sorted. I'm getting ready to go to Rotterdam, actually, for TwitchCon this weekend. Lo and behold, Blizzard drops the Phase 4 preview. Now, for me, I I'd kind of taken a step back from Sod for a while. I played through Phase 1, had fun, it was great. And eventually, I was like, okay, you know, I I'm going to take a step back and... I'm just gonna wait till level 60. I'm gonna do a bunch of other stuff. Did a lot of GTA, was kind of working through some, some of my injuries and stuff that you guys know about, like doing a lot of physical therapy and kind of just taking my, care of myself for a little bit. Uh, I said, I'll check it back out at level 60. It looks like it's right around the corner on July 11th. So this video just came out. Uh, I'm not even live right now. I'm recording this video for you guys because I'm getting ready to leave. And uh, I figured, hey, why not take a look, watch the video and uh, let you guys know what I think. So let's get started. Hi everyone. I'm Clay Stone, Associate Production Director of WoW Classic. Welcome to our Season of Discovery Phase 4 preview. It is time. At long last, we're raising the level cap to 60 and jumping into the endgame. For those of you who have been playing since launch, thank you for going on this journey with us. And to those of you just jumping in, now that the full level up experience is available, you've picked a great time to join us. I also want to give a massive shout out to everyone who has hopped into our first ever Season of Discovery. I did PTR that a little bit. To help I us did. test and tune all of the changes and additions coming to classes. Your feedback- I'm just trying to get credit. <laughs> he thanked me. What's ahead. No, I, I, I did that a little bit, so I already have some thoughts. PTR was focused on classes, we know many of our eagle-eyed players saw hints at the content changes we're making to Endgame. And it's time for us to talk about some of those today. So there we go. let's take a look at what we'll be covering. We'll kick things off with content at 60, then jump into raid information, followed by some important itemization updates, then dive into world event updates, as well as some system updates and more, which you're definitely gonna wanna stick around for. All right, so whether you're already familiar with classic era content, or you're experiencing it for the first time with Season of Discovery, or you just want a refresher, Raising the level cap to 60 brings with it a ton of new content and things to do, including access to all WoW Classic zones like the Burning Steps, Eastern and Western Plaguelands, Silithus, and Winter Spring. You'll also be able to finally max out your character talents. Okay. In addition, the Alteric Valley so this Battleground is like the basics. will also be unlocked. Epic mounts will be available to collect and more. Also, all of the Classic dungeons will now be available, including Scalamance, Strathholm, all three wings of Dire Maul and Black Rock Spire. Okay. And because the bosses have stopped spending their time in phase three socializing in the Grim Guzzler Tavern, the second half of the massive Black Rock Depths dungeon. Uh, in okay, addition, there, you go. there just might be one more dungeon surprise we're not gonna talk about today, but mm. we're excited for players to discover. Switching maybe maybe a, a new dungeon. About runes. Since we've had the PTR up for the past few weeks, none of the runes are a complete secret. So we aren't gonna be spending a lot of time in this presentation talking about runes or classes. However, we will be posting a rundown okay. of new runes and class adjustments separately from this video. So please check the official World of Warcraft forums for that. Moving on to raids. I might not be able I might not be able to talk about that if I'm if I'm scaled down to 20 out of raids. town, but I, but I will whenever I get back. Boss encounters across Probably the on stream. bosses for you to take on. Just gonna leave that there. We wait, 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 wait. 11? They're adding, they're going to add a boss to Molten Core. Everyone to hop in and get their hands on the brand I also, new uh, revamped tier one sets that man, now have multiple variants for I different like 40 man raids. and play styles. That's like, that's that classic. Class that's like a, that's like an intrinsic thing. Tier sets aren't the only place we've made improvements with many non-set items also getting a hefty. They talked about that a little well. bit before. Lastly, we are excited to announce that we will be having a scalable difficulty system in Molten Core, allowing players to turn up the heat inside and face ever-growing challenges. Some aspects so, of this system. So, uh, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll talk about just my general thoughts on this right off the rip. So, I, like I said, I played a little bit on the PTR, and uh, I think it's kind of cool that they want to, like, the theory craft sort of, like, RPG player in my head. When I saw the new sets and, like, saw some of the new new stats and whatnot, like, immediately, like, the freaking co cogs start turning, and I'm like, okay, trying to do this. But I looked at it, right? I looked at the gear, and truthfully, what I saw doesn't necessarily mean that that's what the final product is going to be. But all the gear was so well optimized for the specs, which is what we see in like the later expansions. Every itemization point is is very valuable, whatever. And one of the like core things about Classic WoW is th the gear is kind of janky. 
And people are like, well, why would you like that? Why, like, I don't understand. Like, why do you want this stat on your gear? Well, because the way that this gear is made, and where it has like a bunch of different like random stats, and you know, maybe there's like some spirit on it, or like there's a, you know, this this is like a high stamina item. It's like a high strength item. It allows you to do more different things with your gear and with your class than, hey, my gear is higher item level, thus I am stronger. I think that's one of the big things about building out your character in Vanilla WoW that's really good. Like I remember being like, uh, being, a, being a kid, playing Vanilla WoW, and I would go duel people outside of Ironforge all day. I wouldn't have the best gear, item level wise, but the gear that I had worked really well for dueling like, I mean, I might have some dungeon gear, maybe some molten core gear, and, and I'd be doing these guys and like, there'd be at least like a whole tier ahead of me and I would just have some like random molten core pieces and uh, I would do really well, right? I'd win a lot of these duels, but it's because like my gear was like, even though it was lower item level, it was itemized in a way that made it really good for that situation. What I saw in the PTR was, hey, this is the rec gear. So you have strength, stam, crit, a uh, hit. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. And you didn't really need spell power anymore. Oh, and had int and intellect as well. You, you didn't really need spell power anymore because now you have like talents and stuff that give you spell power based on your attack power. And it, it just it just homogenizes the game a little bit. And that's that's really a direction that we saw WoW go in in later expansions. And I'll take it a step further. It's a direction that we saw Vanilla WoW go in in Nax. Look at the Nax sets. The original tier three Nax gear is unbelievable. Like hyper optimized for whatever spec it's for. Like the, the Paladin set is a God tier healing set. It is unbelievable. Cause it has like, literally I think it's Int, Stam, Mana per five, uh, Spell Crit. And, and plus healing, of course. And that's it. It ha I, I'm pretty sure it has like five stats on it only, and it's just juiced. There's like no random anything. And that's only that's the only thing it's good for is healing. Let's keep watching. 11 bosses, I think is, a, a 11 bosses I think is interesting. Having the raid size be 20 players, I, I think is also something that kind of takes away from what Molten Core was. And what, like 40 man raiding, I think is like a core feature of Vanilla WoW. I know this isn't vanilla, it's season of discovery, but People still want to, like, they still want the game to feel like classic. They just want a little more. What's happening is it feels like retail, but a little less. Turn up the heat inside and face ever-growing challenges. Some aspects of this system were visible on the PTR, and we've enjoyed listening to speculation and, most importantly, your comments and feedback around this new difficulty system and the potential reward structure. As we've been listening to this feedback, We've wanted to let you know that raising the heat level will not affect the quality of rewards. The quality will remain consistent as the difficulty goes up. Instead, it will increase the quality okay, that's good. of rewards. See, like I, I, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest, it. man. I'm kind of disappointed that this was even a consideration because this, this is like such, a, this is such like a retail thing where you do like a harder mode so you get a higher item level of gear, right? Look, it's fine. Like there's, there's two different, two different types of games, but it's very clear that, that we've seen you know, what this type of player wants. I mean, it's good. This is the way they should approach it. They should increase the amount of drops, not increase the quality of the drops. Rewards, making some of the more valuable drops in the raid appear more often. In general, we don't want to heavily gate the best quality gear behind high difficulty content in Season of Discovery, as we really just don't think that's what the season is about. But if you do want to push yourself, you will find additional challenges and perhaps be able to gear up a tiny bit faster. And that's a good Anixia's way to do it for Anixia's layer has your also group. seen some significant loot overhauls as well. And while Anixia has misplaced her stockpile of tier two helms, no more tier two helm on Anixia. Plenty of juicy loot for you to chase in its place. We are also taking a new approach for raid size with Anixia, as she will ultimately be tuned to be completed with 20 players, but the allowable raid size is up to 40 players. We love 40 player raiding but we think it ultimately works best as a soda and pretzels type of content. In other words, the same level of difficulty you come to expect from Classic. So, if you are forming a pickup group and want to ensure quick success, you can bring 40 players. But if you are running with your guild, 
20 players may make more sense to maximize your rewards. World bosses. Well, that's kind of that's kind of what people did anyway, but not at the beginning. People kind of did that anyway with Anixia, because in some ways having 20 people actually makes it easier because of just how like the breaths and stuff work. But but yeah, you'd split raid, you do two Anixia groups, and you get more here. I mean, I don't know. They're, they're kind of pressing the same thing that people already did, I guess. Have had an interesting history in World of Warcraft, particularly in early versions of WoW, where they were hotly contested and created flashpoints for let's say, interesting player interactions. While we love this intense competition in Classic 2019, one drawback to the content is that due to its limited availability, it tended to be content that most players never got to meaningfully interact with. We aim to make it a bit more accessible in Season of Discovery by instancing the content uh. off and handling it similarly to what we just discussed with Anixia. The raids will be tuned for 20, but can be done with up to 40 players to make it friendly to both organized groups and pickup groups. Related to these changes, and to talk all things loot, I'll turn it over- Dude. I mean, this is something they've already talked about, wanting to make world bosses instanced. It's just, like, it's not a world boss anymore. Some, some of the most fun moments of Classic that I've had on private servers, years ago, classic years ago, actually like classic vanilla years ago, was these world boss battles, man. Like the world boss coalition and like politicking between the guilds and okay, this group's got the tag, that group gets the tag. How you wanna do the loot for like a fair system, like a, almost like a fair round robin type of system amongst all the guilds. Like it was really cool. Like that's, that's a big aspect of vanilla WoW. Those social parts of vanilla WoW are, are being picked away, right? And like, it was like, oh, well, I don't like that. I don't like having to work with these other guilds. I don't want to have to work with everybody, but that's that's what the game is. It, it's what made vanilla so good. So many of those things that, I mean, they don't even, Burning Crusade is my favorite, but these things don't even exist in Burning Crusade, right? It's it's very specific to vanilla, a lot, a lot of things like this. Now, at the same time, the servers were a complete disaster with world bosses early on, because so many people just, <sighs> servers lagging out, what, nightmare, right? So that part, obviously, like I get that you want to counteract that. I feel like there really is no good solution. Instancing it really takes away from the whole point of what a world boss is, and that's kind of disappointing. Over to our lead engineer on Classic, Nora Valletta. Take it away, Nora. Thanks, Clay. We're excited to share some of the cool new loot you'll find in phase four of Season of Discovery. First, let's check out some of the new dungeon loot you'll find in phase loot. four. Loot. We've got Iron Foe, which has had its level increase to 58 and now grants 18 attack power when Okay, it Next, Iron Foe buff. We've got Idol of Extanguination, which causes your lacerate ticks to energize you for five I think it's range. good they're making more Totem idols and, and, and relics and totems. Reduces the cast time of your healing rain spell by 100%. Taking inspiration from play using the three Instant? set and sunken temple for shamans we thought it might feel bad to completely lose that set bonus as an option having it be a totem you can swap on and off for fights made a lot of sense here burst of knowledge has had its item level increased to 58 its spell power increased and its active cooldown reduced from 15 minutes classic, down to classic item dude I, I had this we've got Libra i'm hitting flash of lights with this which causes mm. holy shock to reduce the Years cast ago. time of your next two holy lights by 0.2 seconds our classic tier zero dungeon and tier 0 0.5 dungeon it's upgrade okay. sets have seen a full overhaul as well. This is the stuff in that I saw in the WoW, PTR. A basic dungeon set of eight items dropped in max level dungeons, and an epic quest chain was introduced in later patches to upgrade the those tier zero point five. They they do gear. there's like spec Discovery, specific gear now. This is still true, but the upgrade quest chain will be available right at the launch of phase four, and each class is now able to choose between multiple dungeon upgrade set items that accommodate multiple class specializations as they move through the quest chain. While you will have to choose which variation of each set you want during the quest line, the other variants will be obtainable via gold and other means once the quest chain is complete. Oh, I so will, will say this though, I love the recolors for the soul for, for the paladin. Oh. The prop one is black and gold. Oh, Access it looks good. Every set for your class if you want to try them all. These sets were testable on the PTR, and we've had a blast watching people get excited about both the new stats and appearances of these sets. Yeah, I, I thought they looked but good. What about raid loot? Here's a quick look at a few. I just worry it's so optimized. That's what First I'm really up, worried about. We've got an awesome looking elemental shaman shield. Like, there's no Earth thinking about how you want to build your character out. Like, I don't have to think about my gear. PvP shield, but with a distinct new color variation. Oh, what the heck? We've got Magmadar's right and left claw, which allow you to summon core hounds to aid you in combat. The three set bonus actually allows you to transform. What the heck? 
form into Magnadar for a brief period of time. What the heck? Faith Bringer, a two-handed paladin weapon for healing, or key to the city. 3.9 speed. It's a healing. It's a healing two-hander though. A healing two-hander. Okay. From a plus eight to two-handed swords to a plus three. We've added one percent crit with those stats and made it just a tad slower. Our dungeon. Oh! Oh! Them making Obsidian Edge Blades. Oh wait, no, hold on. I'm thinking about normal vanilla. It doesn't matter. Never mind. Oh my gosh, this would have been amazing in normal vanilla for a paladin, if it, if, it, if they slowed it down like this. But because uh, this this was such a good weapon for PVE, uh, not as good for PVP, but it was it was still really good. Don't get me wrong. Ah, frick. The, the, the way they've changed Paladin, it doesn't work the same, where you want this as slow as possible weapon, and at least, I mean, at, from what I saw, because now you have all these instant strikes and Divine Storm, and anyway, I'm just... Three, no, 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 no. percent crit with those stats and made it just a tad slower. Our dungeon sets won't be the only <laughs> color variations you'll see in Phase 4. Here are some of the cool Tier 1 color variations we've got coming soon. Next, why don't we spend a few minutes talking about world events? The Blood Moon is not seeing any major adjustments for Phase 4 and will not be a vector for new items or player power, but it will continue to happen on its normal timer. We wanted to mention this because we are nearing level 60, which means that players will soon have access to the highest level PvP rewards and many players will be ranking up to get them. In order to help with the okay. honor gain process, we're introducing a new Blood Moon currency in Phase 4. When the new currency is introduced, Bloodstained Commendations will have had their cost reduced from one silver coin to 25 copper coins. We envision Blood Moon carrying on as an evergreen supplement to the normal PvP honor ranking process. Okay. If you'd like to interrupt your BGQs for a bit of quick, chaotic world PvP, my favorite, you and your group can venture into Stranglethorn Vale during the Blood Moon and supplement your honor farm. Okay. Next, we're making some significant <laughs> I'm just thinking about like nightmare incursions. The, shifting the mission quests over to you're a gonna have like a, daily uh, quest uh, format. Uh, freaking, uh, we really factory love line. the overall theming of nightmare incursions, but think these adjustments will help make them feel like an optional supplement to normal leveling rather than the be all end all leveling activity for all new characters. So so As I'll tell you, incursions, point. whenever I did incursions at first, I was like, wait, these are sick. Like like whenever I first did them, like like just my initial experience with incursions because I because I went back and I played a little bit I, I I didn't play phase two I went back for the beginning of phase three and I was like catching up in incursions I was like oh this is kind of cool at first I think the reason for that is because of the amount of people that I saw doing the incursions and then I was like okay so there's like a few little extra quests and it's like oh we're in the you know emerald nightmare whatever but then like I went through it and I'm like wait so you can just repeat these forever and you just, just spam your levels up in this one area like again it just takes away from what classic is so it looks like they're addressing that at least which is good format change we are also planning to tone down the difficulty of some of the creatures within nightmare incursions to make these quests a bit more solo friendly the experience gained from these activities will cap out at level 53 as well good but the quests will remain available through level 60 okay. should you desire to earn a reputation Overall, okay, that's good. A lot and keep people in the world. We, you need more people in the open we plan world, on like carrying forward for doing any things. Potential future events. And speaking of future events, for Phase 4's outdoor event, we've taken a few of the lessons learned from previous events and are applying them to a new, more lightweight outdoor event, the Black Rock Eruption. This event will occur every two hours and see additional spawns, daily quest content, opportunities for reputation gain, and increased honor rewards from world people. Black Rock Eruption. Outside of Black Rock okay. Mountain, the forces of the Fire Lord are wreaking havoc. Join the Thorium Brotherhood in repelling these attacks with new daily quests to help grow your reputation with the Thorium Brotherhood and earn quicker access to powerful crafting recipes. Okay, that rewards. sounds cool. Inside the mountain, you'll find your blood is running extra hot, causing you to gain bonus honor only within the mountain itself. As for Dude, I love you. Hey, if you, hey, new upgraded hey if, you, if you've been here for years, if you remember my old, dude, I love Black Rock Mountain PvP, dude. Like solo or like two or three man, like dude, me and Dracova, like seven years. It was like me, Dracova, Spooji. We'd go in there. Oh, dude, it was so fun, dude. Three man, just paladins jumping around, making people fall in the lava, trying to catch us. You're like netting, gnome net somebody in the lava or somebody jumps down, you turn, you stun them in the lava. Oh, dude, we had the so much fun, dude. So much fun. Brotherhood, Argent Dawn, Timber Maw Hold, 
and Hydraxian Water Lords. We've also got some really cool for fun items that allow you to teleport to Ajara, lay a fire resist area of effect that your allies can stand in, or turn you into a water elemental. You'll be able to place these for fun items on your key ring, saving you some valuable backstories. Oh, that's funny. Anyways, I've got some rep to farm, so I'm uh, I think that's I think that's good. To our senior producer, Backspace Josh is already Greenfield, terrible. We'll be happy to share some and, like, of our little fun things. Updates. Thanks, Nora. Going into as long as it's board, not like a few significant system updates. Taking you out of it. Share. First up, we took a lot of the lessons we've learned from the wild offerings currency and have expanded on that system with a new deterministic currency we're calling Tarnished Undermine Reals. Tarnished. You can start earning these coins from most non red yeah, I'm feeling tarnished playing Elden Ring. Over level 55, and each boss will drop a single currency for each player in the group once per day per boss. This currency can be used to purchase a variety of things, such as rare crafting recipes, crafting materials, powerful gear, as well as a variety of other valuable items. We've gotten a lot of feedback from players asking for ways to keep dungeon content relevant longer, and this is one way we're looking at keeping dungeon runs feeling rewarding at level 60. We're also particularly excited about a brand new feature to World of Warcraft. Brand new feature. A twice weekly raid lockout system. One bit of feedback we got early on was that three day lockouts on raids was difficult for guild leaders to manage due to the inconsistency of when reset days occurred. In Sunken Temple, we moved the lockout to weekly to add a bit more stability, but we always wanted to revisit this to see if there was a way for us to provide the increased keys so you can do it twice availability a week. that the three day lockout provided, but with a bit more stability and predictability to help with better raid planning. The twice weekly lockout accomplishes this by having raids using this lockout interval reset twice a week on static reset days. For example, in North America, twice weekly raids will reset on Tuesday and Saturday mornings. We okay. plan to use this lockout interval for all of the raids in phase four. We feel that with the pace of Season of Discovery, this is a great step forward to allow you to raid more if you choose to. At this point, we're approaching the home <laughs> stretch, but we Dude. do have a few more updates to share before we close things out. With phase four and the I feel level like 60, I feel like people are gonna just burn burn through it level war and get levels. tired. I think people are gonna get In tired of it. Discovery, we're also planning to add an alliance equivalent to War Chief's blessing, the might of Stormwind. As fun as it was to sculpt Thank and God, and our dude. Characters. Dude, this was one of the biggest like, oh, okay. So I'm a world buff enjoyer. Okay, I've been I've been very pro world buffs. I was very against like them wanting to get rid of it whenever they did um, season of whatever the hell after after they came out with classic and they were like, oh well, people people complain about world buffs in the forums a lot. And I was like, stop. People are gonna get bored. Trust me. Uh, and they did. One of the big things with world buffs that really sucked is like, Alliance needs to have an equivalent to this. Right, and um, now there's some things that Alliance has that Horde doesn't have. Like you know, like Paladins are really strong for raids and all that. But all that stuff's been addressed in Season of Discovery. I'm really, really, really glad that they had this. Like in my original thought for a Classic Plus, uh, this would be one of the things that was done. That and like the World Buff should not be dispellable and uh, all that stuff. And most of them aren't. In even in in vanilla in in original Classic. Uh, only only a few of the world buffs are dispellable anyway, but it's like you can dispel some of them and then like it just scales down and it, it's just the whole thing. We all know like you can have like a level 30 just come like spam dispel you. It's it's not PvP, it's griefing. I mean that's been well established. There's there's really no defending it. Hoping for a kindly priest to mind control us for a chance at War Chief's blessing, this should make getting your world buffs a bit less cumbersome for Alliance players. As with previous phases, Discoverer's Delight will continue to function from 50 to 59, providing a 50% experience boost in that level range. We've learned a lot of great lessons about leveling, and while we want you to level a little bit faster, there's a lot of content in the 50 to 60 range, and we don't want to totally trivialize the journey in phase four. So having a more nominal buff from 50 to 59 makes sense. Characters from 1 through 49 will still enjoy 150% experience increase as well, so it should be super easy to get those alts caught up. Sunken Temple will give a generous amount of XP, so running that while you're leveling could give you a good bump as well. I, I think it's good four, that they're, that they're helping get people caught back up. Swap their Excuse me, people like me. There's probably a lot of people who quit and then this they're like, I'll try again at 60. This will launch of Phase 4, but we do plan to introduce it a short time later. Perhaps most excitingly, we've done major overhauls to many iconic in-game crafting recipes, with dozens of recipes replaced or given a method to upgrade into even better versions of their original crafted items. First up, we've got the refined Hammer of the Titans, a two-handed mace with 2.0 speed that okay. has a very hefty amount of feral attack That's power. a lot of attack it also power. It its classic three-second stun proc, which will now proc in druid forms. Wow, I was, dude, I was literally just about to say this. I was gonna say, dude, well, I'm pretty sure that this wouldn't even proc for 
Dude, this is gonna be nasty Arcanite for feral PvP. Newly upgraded and refined into a four point Oh, Arcanite Reaper! Stats and a very fancy new 4.0 speed. These are just two examples out of many. Oh, dude, that would be incredible, man. Oh, for old pa for vanilla paladin, that would be so. Oh, that'd be crazy. That would be so crazy for for, for PvP. Oh, fancy new classicified glow. These are just two examples out of many iconic crafting recipes to receive major glow ups in phase four. So get out there and get crafting. Looking to the raid release schedule, in a departure from previous phases, we've decided to space out the unlock of raid content following launch. Okay. Azragos and Kazik will go live one week after launch, with Molten Core and Onyxia the week after that. Two weeks after Phase launch? Phase four is going to have a ton of compelling things to do right at 60, with a lot of new and improved loot to chase. So. With July 18th. Okay, so I'm going to be playing NCAA, the new college football game. It's coming out. Coach S fans coming back on the 16th, I think, is early access. So so we have, we have the 16th for early access, the college football game. And uh, then I'm going to go to Evo. So I'm going to go do Street Fighter at Evo. I'm going to, I'm going to, play, like, I'm going to lose, but I, I said I would sign up just to do it. But we're going to go do Evo. Maybe, maybe get some, some training from Justin Wong. That will be sick. But, yeah, I'll have... So on the 16th, they'll be doing that. And then, yeah, I don't even know. I mean, we'll see. I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. For all I know, I could come back, do phase four a little bit and just be like, you know what? I, I don't, like, I, it's just, it just doesn't interest me. Or I come back and I really enjoy it. And we'll see what happens. You think that this pre-raid gearing phase is one of the best parts about hitting level 60 on a fresh That's character. true. And giving that pre-raid best in slot process a bit of time to breathe and giving you some worthwhile goals to accomplish ahead of the raids becoming available is very exciting. Should provide you with a lot of great, satisfying gear progression leading up to those raids becoming available. With that, we are done with today's presentation. We appreciate your patience as we're working diligently to get phase four into your hands. We really appreciate all of the participation in our recent PTR releases, and we continue to consume your feedback as we're finishing things up for phase four. As always, the WoW Classic development team is incredibly grateful for your support. Thank you for playing with us, and thank you for your feedback and participating and helping us develop this season. We'll see you again when Season of Discovery Phase 4 goes live on July 11th, 2024. Thank you and goodbye. All right. Yeah, hey, man. Was look. it Asmund Gold right? Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, look. I, I'm excited to see what Sod Phase 4 brings. We'll, we'll see what happens if I really get into it and I start playing again. But you, you guys have seen my other video, and you guys kind of know how I feel about this generally. It's I want Classic Plus. I don't want Retail Minus. I worry a little bit, and I'll say even, I'll go beyond saying I worry a little bit. I know at this point. There's a lot of things that have happened in Season Discovery, some of the decisions they've made. Some of them have been good. Some of them have been cool. It, it was fun, right? There's also a lot of other decisions that just don't really feel like classic. What I've always wanted out of a classic plus is literally just classic plus a little bit more. And now we're getting like classic plus, 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 or retail minus. There are some cool things that kind of, like I said, it kind of gets my theory crafting brain going and, I, and I'll see these things where I'm like, oh, like you can do this with this rune. What if you came up with this build? And then like some, some fun PVP related things, because that's what I really enjoy. I love dueling. I love PVP. Like that's, that's like, that's mostly what I do. That's, that's where a lot of my enjoyment in WoW comes from. But I feel like at least whenever I played on the PTR, the numbers and the scaling, and there's so much craziness going on that I worry that PVP might not even be that great in phase four. For me, the bottom line is if, if the PVP ends up not being very enjoyable, then I probably will not enjoy phase four overall. That is my own personal opinion. I, I know, you know, some people don't like PVP at all or whatever. Some people probably think the PVP is gonna be fine. That's just from, from what I noticed whenever I played just a little bit. So look, I, I love WoW. I've, I've, I've always loved WoW, such a massive part of my life, even for the years that I didn't play it. And even now, right, especially Classic and all that, right? I mean, that's, that's what I've always been about. It's Vanilla and Burning Crusade. I always want to support that. I do. Like, I always want to support that. And I just want people to be able to play the best version of Classic that they possibly can. Look, I, I'm really interested to see what it brings, man. They're definitely doing a lot of different things that are at least intriguing, right? Like I said before, my freaking Vanilla brain, the cogs are turning, and it'll probably be interesting for a little bit. Let's see how long it lasts. I'd love to share it with you guys. So if you guys are uh, if you guys are new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notifications. I do a lot of different things on this stream, uh, or on this on this channel, stream everything. I do a lot of different things in general, right? I role play and IRL and this and that. And I I spend the last six months doing RP and just kind of like taking care of myself a little bit, kind of recovering from injuries and whatnot. That went 
incredibly well. That was super fun. We're just kind of we're kind of mixing in a little bit of everything. We're getting we're bringing the variety back. Okay, we're bringing the variety back. It's gonna be good. Sounds great. Turn on your notifications. Everything is S Fan TV. YouTube, Instagram, Discord, Reddit, Twitch, Twitter. Everything is S Fan TV. So subscribe, follow, whatever it's called, and I'll see you guys next time.